Hello everyone, I'm Mike Adamski and I'm going to be talking today about how to use Articulate Storyline to create quizzes using templates. So on the screen you can see we have two templates. Uh, one is within Articulate Storyline itself and the other is in Notepad. Notepad is again just a free piece of very simple software that comes on, on your computer. And it's important you're using Notepad and not Word for this, or else it's not going to import properly. Uh, Storyline can also use Excel documents, but for this tutorial, we're just going to be using Notepad. So the very first thing I'm doing is I'm opening up uh, what essentially is a one-question quiz that I've just ripped out of a previous quiz I made, and I've now turned this into a template. So when I start, I always start with my template. First thing I do is I save it to the new quiz it's going to be so that I leave my template intact. Now, this is only one question. This is eventually going to be five. And we're actually going to be deleting this slide. But the reason we start with this particular slide in place is that the software reads uh, kind of what's in place in this particular template, including not just the master slide here or part of the master sl uh, slide series, but also, also the feedback slides that you can see here. So all of our questions that we import from that notepad document are going to uh, match up with the different feedback slides we see here. So the very first thing I actually do uh, is I just changed the name just because it saves me a, a copy and paste later. But our new quiz is going to be called Organizational Change. Uh, I'm going to delete this slide later. So this is I just placed that there as a placeholder because there's obviously a, quite a bit of uh, copy pasting we'll be doing here. And just to be as quick as possible, that's something I've learned has just helped me with the step. So this is our quiz template. Now on my other screen you don't see it, but I have the SME content. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace this kind of dummy question here, and I'm going to paste in the SME content. And there it is. Right? So this was sent over um, from a subject matter expert. I've gone through and cleaned it up uh, a little bit here, but this is pretty much how it goes. This came from a Word document, and one of the suggestions that we'll definitely make is remove all formatting uh, before you, you copy anything over. It's going to make life a lot easier, and the auto formatting are things like the auto tabbing or like an auto numbering or an auto lettering. That's going to simplify things. The next thing I do is I copy this MCO. And I have to place that before each question because that's telling the software when it imports what kind of question is this, multiple choice for MC, and how many points is this question worth? Because this is a formative assessment I'm making, I'm using zero points across the board, but you can of course put in whatever you would like in that particular spot. So I should have a total of five questions here. So let me, uh, my mouse is acting silly, there we go. And let's see, there's another one right here. Okay, so one, two, three, four, there's our five questions. So again, I have a little bit more formatting to do here. Um, I would also suggest, uh, you know, taking a second to make sure it's um, up to par as far as like grammar, <clears throat> excuse me, punctuation, things like that. Um, I've already done that on this particular one, but for instance, this subject matter expert, a lot of their questions came in and there were no periods at the end. So just checking end punctuation, things like that, it never hurts. Next thing I do is I'm looking to see what the correct answer is according to the subject matter expert. And so, okay, this one is letter B. So I'm going to put a star for option B. And again, they just go in order, right? So that's A, B, C, D. This question is C. So I'm going to go here, put the star there. This one is B. This one is also B. And this last one is C. Okay, so now I no longer need this note for these questions, right? So I'm actually just going to hit the uh, shift home key, delete that. And then what I'm doing here is I'm going to take the feedback because this part here is the feedback that the, the subject matter expert provided. And this is a generic piece of feedback. We're going to use the same feedback for each answer. You can, of course, change these um, if you wanted to have specific, um, if you wanted to have specific, uh, feedback for each question, you could definitely do that. So here's what you need to do though, is you need to use uh, this piping, right? And, and piping is this, it's the shift kind of like forward slash button and kind of like underneath your backspace button. And this needs to go in between the question, I'm sorry, the answer uh, choice and then the feedback. And then you have to put a space on each side of that. So that's what I do. I do this and I'm gonna hit shift again, hit end to select the whole line. Control C copies it. Now this one I can just backspace and, and bam, that one's in place. It's going to put my space there. Now this one, I've already had it copied. So I'm just going to do Control V, paste it in place. Control V, paste it in place. And then the last one, there. So that question is ready to go. And it's just the same process for these other ones, right? Space, 
piping space, hit the home key, shift N, that selects the whole thing. For this one, I'll just backspace and that one's good to go. Paste, paste, and paste. And again, we just continue on with these, um, these last ones here. And again, sometimes it's, it's obviously helpful if the uh, subject matter expert or whoever's working on this content is able to send this to you in the proper format because it will save you a lot of time. But again, you can't always just trust that it's done properly. The software does a pretty good job of letting you know oops, when there's an error. Um, and so as you try to import, it'll say like, whoa, hey, there's, there's an issue here. This isn't going to work. Um, and then it'll... Uh, tell you what to fix or whatever. But again, if you have a subject matter expert who has been in trained in maybe how to use this uh, format, or even if you just send them this video, and maybe they just watch this part of it, that's one way that you could get them to um, potentially help you. And, and it, will, it will certainly speed things up for you um, if that's something that uh, you're able to do and potentially get from them. Uh, but nonetheless, this is the process for how, uh, again, adding in feedback at this point. So at this point, our quiz is ready, right? By the way, all of this up here, anything with this double slash, these will be ignored. These won't be imported. These are just instruction lines. And you can put anything in here you want. Um, just make sure that you start it with this double slash, right? And that will never be fed into Articulate. So, of course, what I need to do now is Control Save, or I can just go File Save. I have this document saved um, however I want for the course I'm working on and the actual section of the course I'm working on. And then um, we should be good to go. And if not, I'm going to just leave this document open in the background here. But once we go in here, we should be all set. So now I'm going to go File, Import, Questions from File. Now on my other screen, you don't see it, but I'm going to navigate to that file that we just made, that Notepad document. And I'm going to pull it up, and okay, there's no error. So here you would, you would have gotten a thing saying like, whoa, you forgot to mark an answer for number two or something like that, right? Everything here is good. You can even double check things here, like point totals and whatnot. And so again, you can go in here. And what I've found is it gives you a few different options. You can either create a brand new scene or you can just insert it into the current scene. And I've had much, much better luck using importing into the current scene. And that's gonna, again, keep your, your slide masters here uh, nice and clean. So now I import this. I'm gonna import my five questions, but you'll notice we're actually gonna have six questions. And that's because this template slide is still there. And it'll finally make sense now why I changed the name on this uh, template slide. And again, it's just to save a quick copy paste. Uh, but what I'll do, so you can see these now imported, these questions have imported. And there's a couple little space fillers, at least in the template I'm using now that I need to go in and, and just make an adjustment for and these are really easy. So again, I'm going to take this. I've now had that copied in. So I've copied that title because I need to put it on my other ones, I can actually delete this sixth uh, slide now because we don't need it. So I'm gonna delete that. And here's the five questions we imported. So now for my my uh, template, and again, your template's going to look different, but all I'm doing now is just throwing a quick number on each of these and putting the title in. And as I go through these, I'm looking at things like, okay, did everything import properly? Because it's weird. Sometimes storyline, like I've had these questions, they import, and they're gray text instead of white um, and, and little things like that. So, I mean, it never hurts to um, give a quick look. Uh, so again, that's all five questions. They're imported. If you look, you're going to see that the feedback is right. We have the different uh, correct and incorrect options for each one, um, but they've all imported. The very last thing I do is on my keyboard, I hit Control F, and that brings up the find option. What I'm noticing, at least with my articulate storyline, is that when it imports from a notepad, if I have an apostrophe S, like today's food menu or something like that, an apostrophe is coming through as this weird combination of things like this A and, and Sigma or whatever that is in the trademark logo, that's replacing apostrophe. So I want to re-replace that, right? So I hit replace. I, I have this already just saved in the articulate storyline because it's the only thing I've had to replace so far. And I just replace it with an apostrophe. Some quizzes might not have it, some will. Um, so this one had five, right? And they were probably in the feedback somewhere. There was probably one question that had uh, that weird logo instead of an apostrophe. Now that's fixed and I'm done. The last step that I do is I will go in and I will publish this, right? So I need to just update the name here. Um, this is going to be our competency five objective one. I need to select the right folder for it. So I select that. And then that's it. So this one in particular, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm exporting it as, or I'm publishing it as a SCORM file. This is what's going to go into the LMS. 
Uh, it's what our production team uses to um, basically populate the course with. Uh, but there are a number of different things that you can publish with that, even, even as a Word document, if you wanted to say send it out um, and, and have it reviewed or something like this, if there's some stakeholders that want to see it in a little bit of an easier format, you can go ahead and do that. And then these will export rather quickly, um, I guess. Uh, and then again, there's even some other options there. You can upload it via FTP, you can zip it up, and if you want to try to email it if it's small enough, um, and then the last thing I love to use is I really like going into um, this Review360, which if you're logged in with your email, um, this will actually publish it to your own Review360 page. And this is a great way to share the actual content uh, of what you just created so that the people can see what it looks like and they can interact with it. It's also a really good way to do QA because as we all know, sometimes when you're working in the software, it, you think it's working a certain way or you think it looks a certain way but then of course it doesn't when you go to export it. So um, that's also another really nice way. So uh, I need to click publish on that. And then once that publishes, that will go to your, um, your review 360 page. And it's automated, right? It's actually really cool. Like this will actually, even if you're inside of an actual media piece that you're re-exporting here or that you're republishing to review, it will update it, right? So if I drag this over, you can see we have all of these different quizzes I've made and watch eventually that one's going to pop up here and it's going to be competency five objective one. That's just going to populate right into um, this particular screen here. And there it is, right? So it just finished. I can now click in there. I can interact around with the quiz and so on. And again, it's as simple as that. Um, setting up your templates. Again, I think that's a, a very, very important step that you'll want to take the time to do. Um, play around with it a little bit. I, I admit I had some problems getting uh, that particular uh, template to work for me, but once you get it up and running, it's pretty smooth. It, it's pretty seamless, right? So anyway, I hope this video is helpful. Again, we were looking at Articulate Storyline and how to use templates to create quizzes in a much uh, faster and more seamless way. So if this helped you out, give this video a like and subscribe for further tips and tricks on how to use Articulate Storyline and many other things in regards to instructional design. Thanks for watching, everyone.